my next question is, now you got into the space where you've discovered your spiritual gift, you went through your shamanic uh, journey, mm -hmm. right? And you are becoming familiar with this gift. At what point does the idea spark you to make a business out of this? And I say business because that's a delicate balance. Mm -hmm. And this is also a loaded question because I want to know that delicate balance between having a business where you're offering spiritual services to help people. When did you, what sparked you getting into this business and how do you navigate that balance? That part. Well, that's a good question. Because I still, I don't offer shamanic services because I do have Native American ancestry um sorry I'm, I'm sorry i look at the camera because i do not have time for the di diaspora wars and this and that because mm -hmm. i am also african but please i do have actual native american ancestry mm -hmm. cherokee and blackfoot and w as a shaman i do feel like i have to be initiated mm -hmm. that's my personal feeling because with it as a shaman you really can especially like if i were to do it using plant medicine like ayahuasca and maybe sometimes even shrooms mm -hmm. if i were to assist someone and be their trip sitter and their shaman during a journey like that i would really want to know what to do because people can truly commit suicide and ruin their own physical lives based off what they see in their spiritual and i do not want to take on that responsibility without knowing yeah. what to do yeah so i don't offer shamanic services yet I do readings. I do divination, um, meaning that, you know, I'll forecast the future for you. I'll answer certain questions from using cards mm -hmm. or whatever I'm picking up on. When did I decide to do that? Yeah, like what sparked that? What sparked it? I mean, I was already doing readings way before I even knew you what the fuck I was doing. That was, it was just. <laughs> you just like, you know what? I'm going to just do it, yes. The like, the I'm just going to keep going, yes. It's strange going here. Get a little cash keep, for it. I mean, to be honest, it was just like, I've been doing this so long, definitely going to charge now. <laughs> like, that was it. Like, it right. was just, my journey is very authentic. And I know it's not perfect in terms of, you know, if I were to give somebody advice. And people say this all the time. I just saw a tweet that was like, oh, I don't like to go to panels because they be saying shit like, be humble. Tell me how you made a million dollars. Bitch, that's how. <laughs> you didn't fucking know, bitch. Being fucking humble. Being willing to be the assistant. Being willing to be the driver. Yeah. Being willing to not know what the fuck you're talking about. And being that student. That's how I got to the million dollars. Because it's not going to be a cookie cutter experience for most people. Mm -hmm. Unless you come from nepotism or from something to where, let's say, you went to a super good school. And there's right. like steps and networks or whatever that you know that you could tap into a lot of this shit is going to be authentically your journey it was truly meant for you there is no get rich quick scheme right. i was just working for a company that was telling niggas they could get a come up real quick and look at that right that well, worked for you and it didn't even work for we ain't gonna get into that yeah. we ain't gonna get into that but right, don't yeah. payouts don't be what they're supposed to be like yeah. i was telling people they were supposed to be and i realized that after my accident i said oh Damn, right. I was lying all the way through. I thought that right. that part was the truth, but it wasn't. Yeah. So what I'm saying is just that, like, when did it happen? It was just authentic. It, it was just... It just gradually happened naturally. Truthfully, you have to follow your heart the same way that your, your grandmother said. Like, if you do not follow your heart, what are you following? If you're mm. too much in the head, you're going to be probably egotistical, like an Elon Musk or it's plenty of celebrities that's like super cerebral about their whole spiritual shit. And they end mm. up Satanists or Luciferians like, bro, it's not just in your that's not it. The heart is the conduit to the soul. Like you can be on your soul's journey every step of the way if you follow your heart. Mm -hmm. If you follow the art. So that's what I did. And when I was ready to charge, I tried, hell, I was charging in college. Yeah. Yes. So it was okay. like $10. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> $10, $5, all that shit. Yeah. And you mentioned like having the, um, oh my God, I know the word. What's the word? Botanica? No, not a botanica. You mentioned having, okay, ethics. Yes. And how you're ethical. You have to be ethical with your spiritual gifts. Like when did you learn about, oh, yeah, the ethics of it? Because I imagine you might have had to bump your head or something or no, with that i mean kind of like i described it it was with my first sales job i was working for this marketing company and i was doing the sales portion and i was signing people up i was signing people up to get a subscription with that platform so that they can handle their marketing and when i'm signing people up like i said i was doing conjure work mm -hmm. at the time so i would do like different 
just candle work, Got whatever you. that was, so was going to be. That's was a, that was the moment. and when yes, and when I heard them people on the phone sounding like zombies talking to me, mm-hmm. I knew that was my work working, but that wasn't their conscious mind. Right. And then the funny thing was is that they would be calling me. They wouldn't even call the customer support, which is who mm-hmm. the fuck they had. They would call me and say, "Oh, I have a problem with this. I have a problem with that." And so I knew I could not oversell. Right. I knew that I could not overpromise and underdeliver. So I was speaking to the person, and I would have people. I had this lady call me. Her name was Ingrid. My grip, my my late grandmother's name is Ingrid. It was so symbolic. It was just like, just those type of synchronicities where I'm like, "Oh no, I my ancestors, my guides, what I'm doing with this conjure." the most high is bringing these people before me i cannot yeah squalor that i can't yeah, yeah you can't, mistreat this yeah, energy you can't. know what i'm saying so that's what i knew that's when you knew like i have to be ethical like i have to be on point like yeah i mean i can't lie mm-hmm. i mean that was my thing i can't lie right, right. And i'm already a terrible liar yeah i feel that am i yeah you know that already that's what you yeah. say yeah i feel that yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you want to tell the truth so bad Shut up. <laughs> I do. I really do. It's just terrible. It's like I be wanting to be like. Uh, uh. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Man. Right, right. But those are all the things that make you really great at doing your job, you know, and doing your work.